Hello students, welcome to lecture 22b. Let's first start with metallic substances. Um, metallic substances consist of metallic bonds, as it says in your notes. And make sure you remember that metallic bonds form between the positive nuclei of the metal ions as well as the sea of mobile electrons that flow around them. Okay? And because the positive nuclei and the negative electrons are oppositely charged, they attract one another. Now the metallic properties or properties of metallic substances are as follows. They first have electrical and thermal conductivity, and that's because of the mobile electrons in their network. Because their electrons are free moving and they're moving charges in this network of a metallic substance, they can conduct electricity quite well. The mobile electrons are the two key words you have to use to explain electrical and thermal conductivity of metals. Okay, next, metals are lustrous or shiny, and let me explain now why. Now I will reveal why they are lustrous. They're shiny because the orbitals within metallic substances have small energy differences, like here and here, so it's very small. So what the metals only have to do is they only have to absorb small amounts of light energy with different frequencies, so that the electrons can absorb a specific amount of energy, and they, when they emit it, they emit specific amounts of energy in the form of light that comes off as shine or luster. Next, metallic substances are malleable and ductile. By malleable, I mean that metallic substances can be hammered into thin sheets. Why is this? Because of the nature of metallic bonds. Specifically, like I said before, because of the nature of metallic bonds, they are specifically uniform in terms of how they are um, bonded. All right? Specifically, by uniform, I mean that the metallic bonds can slide past one another very easily when you try to hammer them without breaking so that they flatten into a thin sheet. So that's the reason why metallic substances are malleable because they are uniform in terms of their bond nature and specifically they can slide past each other without breaking. Metallic substances also are ductile, meaning they can be drawn into thin wires because metallic bonds are uniform as well, meaning they can slide past each other without breaking and rearrange themselves into sort of a thin wire. Okay. Finally, I want you to know that metallic substances have a crystal lattice structure much like ionic compounds do, so it looks like this. Finally, an example of a metallic bond is um, Cu or copper because any metal will have metallic bonds. So now let's discuss how to compare the strengths of different metallic bonds. The strength of a metallic bond depends on its nuclear charge of the metal atoms as well as the number of electrons in the metal's electron C. All right, the nuclear charge, as we know, um, relates to the number of protons in the metal atom. What you'll realize here, as shown in these trends down here, is across the period, the more protons or the greater the nuclear charge is, the stronger the metallic bond is. All right? Um, also related to metallic bond strength, which measures the metallic bond strength is enthalpy of vaporization, which is the amount of heat you need to vaporize the metal at constant pressure. So this enthalpy of vaporization or heat needed to vaporize the metal at constant pressure also relates to the strength of metallic bonds. Specifically, the higher the enthalpy of vaporization, the stronger the metallic bond. Also, the greater the nuclear charge, the stronger the metallic bond. So putting this together, across a period, what you'll see is for the same number of electron shells across one period, the greater your nuclear charge is, the stronger your metallic bond is. And the stronger metallic bond is, the higher the enthalpy of vaporization. For example, as you see here across period two for the same number of electron shells, um, since they're in the same period, you'll see that Be having more protons and therefore greater nuclear charge means that Be has stronger metallic bonds. And how you know a stronger metallic bonds is that it has a higher enthalpy of vaporization. Similar um, trend in period three. And A, because it has the least number of protons in period three, has the lowest nuclear charge. So therefore, since it has the lowest nuclear charge, it will have the weakest metallic bonds of all the metals in period 3, and therefore the lowest enthalpy vaporization. On the other hand, Al is the metal in period 3 with the greatest nuclear charge or greatest number of protons, so it has the strongest metallic bonds and the highest enthalpy vaporization of 294. All right, so make sure you add this last part to your notes because it's not included in your notes, but I want you to add it in any way. All right, finally, let's discuss properties of ionic compounds, molecular compounds, and metallic solids. Ionic compounds, in terms of arrangement of particles, as you know, always has a crystal stru crystalline structure or lattice structure, which is composed of obsolete charged ions, usually metals and non-metal ions put together, where it's always plus, minus, plus, minus, because those attract most easily, right? Um, and uh, yeah, that's the arrangement of particles. And as you saw in class, it looks like this, as I showed you with that model for sodium chloride, for example. It looks something like this. All right, now the phase of STP for most ionic compounds, or pretty much all of them, is solid. For example, an example of an ionic compound that's solid at STP is salt. So that's how you can remember that all ionic compounds are usually solids at STP. All right, the general traits of an ionic compound 
is that all ionic compounds tend to be brittle or they break very easily. For example, if you were to take salt and crush it in your hands, you could grind it or crush it really easy because it's very brittle. All right, now um, ionic compounds, also because they involve full-on ions, like full charges, like a full plus charge for a positive ion and a full minus charge for a negative ion, have high melting points, high boiling points, and they don't vaporize easily because the plus and minus attract so readily that it's very hard to break that very strong attraction apart. In terms of heat and electrical conductivity, ionic compounds tend to be very poor heat and electrical conductors in solid phases. The reason for this is because if you look, and I, you might want to draw a diagram to help you understand it, in solid phase, the plus and minus ions, or the cation and anion, are so close to one another like this that you cannot pass electricity through it or allow them to move freely. So because they cannot move freely, they cannot conduct electricity readily. On the other hand, if you have a liquid or solution phase, and you might also want to draw this, the ions are more, more mobile. So they're more freely moving and more separated. And that whole idea of moving charges is what allows um, is what allows electrical and heat conductivity in the first place. So the reason why ionic compounds conduct electricity very well in liquid and solution phases is because of mobile ions in the liquid and aqueous phases. Because in liquid phase, they're more separated out than they are in solids, so they are more mobile. And in aqueous phase, obviously, the ions are so separated because they're surrounded by water to separate them apart. Okay? Finally, I want you to know that ionic compounds dissolve very, very easily in water because they're, you'll learn later that they're very, 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 very polar. Don't worry about that. what that means now, just know that because they're very, very, very polar and water is also polar, they can dissolve in one another. All right, next we have molecular compounds. Molecular compounds, as you saw with graphite or diamond, have a very non-distinct pattern. They're not definitive. They're not like a cube or crystalline. They're very non-distinct. You can't really tell what it is. And that's because molecular compounds consist of covalent bonds between neutral non-metal atoms. And the phases of molecular compounds at SCP are solid, like you see with sugar, liquid like you might see with water, and gas like you might see with carbon dioxide. All right, now, molecular compound solids tend to be malleable in general or bent into thin, sh thin shapes really easily, while the liquid and gas properties can vary very readily. Now, if we think about molecular compounds, we remember that for polar um, covalent bonds that you have partial negative and partial positive charges, right? If you compare partial negative and partial positive, versus the full on positive and negative and ionic compounds, you can see that molecular compounds have a weaker attraction because they're just partial charges. If you think about that in that way, you can think that because these charges are not as strong as they are in ionic, that relative to ionic compounds, molecular compounds have relatively low melting points and low boiling points and they vaporize easily because it's somewhat easier to um, melt them or evaporate them. Molecular compounds now are poor electrical and heat conductors in all phases. And the reason for this is because they do not have moving charges. Instead, they only have neutral atoms. Since you have no charges, there's no point. Because if you don't have a charged particle, you can't conduct electricity. Since they're neutral atoms, they cannot conduct electricity. All right, finally, molecular compounds are less soluble than ionic compounds are, but they're more soluble than metallic compounds are. Just make sure you know that for now. All right, you'll learn more about this later. You'll learn later that nonpolar um, molecules cannot dissolve in water, while polar molecules can dissolve in water. But just make sure you know for now that molecular compounds are less soluble than ionic compounds, but more soluble than metallic compounds. Finally, we have metallic substances. Metallic substances, as we know, have lattice structures, and metallic bonds consist of positive metal ions, nuclei surrounded by a mobile sea of electrons, right? And let's remember, metallic substances, specifically metals, are all solids except for mercury, which is a liquid at STP. Let's also note that metals are malleable, ductile, and lustrous. Next, because you have a very strong attraction between full-on positive charges from the positive metal ions and full-on negative charges from the electrons around them, because there's this attraction between these full-on positive and negative charges, metals or metallic substances tend to have high melting points, high boiling points, and they don't vaporize easily. All right. Next, um, metallic substances conduct heat and electricity very strongly in solid and liquid phases. The reason for this, and I want you to write this down, is because they have something called mobile electrons. Because you have a mobile sea of electrons, when, those, when you have those moving charges and electricity hits them, they can conduct heat and electricity very easily in solid and liquid phases. Notice I didn't say that metals conduct heat and electricity in aqueous phase. That's because there's no such thing as a metal aqueous phase, because metals do not dissolve in water. If you threw a copper or lead shot into water, it would just sit there. It wouldn't dissolve or anything. All right?
So please make sure you um, wrote all these notes and complete your notes for tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.